Today's lecture will cover material on the cell cycle. Before the lecture begins, make sure you've read the assigned readings for this lecture and minimize all your distractions by turning off any background noise such as movies, TV, Netflix, music, etc. Listen in a quiet space, turn off all extra devices, and make sure that you're taking plenty of notes throughout the lecture. At the end of the lecture, you want to combine these notes with notes you took when you read the assigned material. So let's get started by looking at the cell cycle. Have you ever wondered how cells divide or how chromosomes are distributed in newly divided cells? Well, in this lecture, we're going to answer those questions. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the cell cycle, which is the division of the cell and mitosis, which is the division of genetic material in the cell. As we go through mitosis, we'll talk about each of the phases, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. So as we move through this lecture, be sure that as you listen to each of the slides, you take notes and you put all this information in your own words to maximize your learning. So let's get started with cell division. Cell division is the process by which the cells divide. The ability of organisms to produce more of their own kind is one of the characteristics that distinguishes living things from non-living matter. This is important because this allows for reproduction as well as growth and development and tissue renewal. So in the first image, you see a micrograph of an amoeba and the single cell eukaryote is dividing into two cells, each of which is a new daughter cell that will become a new organism. Cell division also occurs in prokaryotes and therefore it is important for reproduction of organisms. Next, cell division is important because the cell cycle is important for growth and development. The middle micrograph shows an image of a sand dollar embryo. The sand dollar is a multicellular organism this picture was taken shortly after the fertilized egg divides, forming two cells. And finally, cell division is important for tissue renewal. The last micrograph shows bone marrow cells in fully developed eukaryotes. These cells continually repair and replace any cells that die accidental deaths or cells that die from normal wear and tear. An important feature of cell division is the distribution of identical genetic material, DNA, resulting in two identical daughter cells. This is important because it allows genetic information or DNA to be passed down from one generation of cells to the next generation of cells. When a cell is actively dividing, the DNA can be found in packaged structures called chromosomes. DNA that is not actively dividing is called chromatin, a complex of linear DNA and protein. Once ready to divide, the chromatin condenses into chromosomes. The micrograph here shows a eukaryotic cell's chromosomes. They are in purple. The thinner surrounding threads represent the cytoskeleton. This particular cell is getting ready to divide. Before a cell can divide, the genetic material must make a copy of itself and condense to form chromosomes. The micrograph here shows the representation of a chromosome that has just undergone this process. Once duplicated, each chromosome has two sister chromatids that are joined together. The structure looks like an X. The centromere is where the two sister chromatids connect. During cell division, each duplicated chromosome separates at the centromere and moves into the two separate nuclei. Once separated into the new nuclei, chromatids are called chromosomes. Before the cell can divide, the genetic material has to make a copy of itself, and this is another view of that copy. Duplicated, once duplicated, each chromosome has two sister chromatids. These sister chromatids are connected by a centromere, and the sister chromatids look like an X. The sister chromatids are the duplicated chromosomes. 
The specific number of chromosomes is different for each species. The type of cell dictates the chromosomes that are present. Somatic cells, or non-reproductive cells, have two sets of chromosomes. This is not found in sex cells like sperms and eggs, which are also called gametes. The gametes are the sex cells, and they only contain one set of the chromosomes. In biology, we define a single set of chromosomes as N. Therefore, in somatic cells, there are two N. We call this diploid. Gametes are referred to as N or haploid. So let's use the human chromosome number as an example. The diploid number is 46. Two times N equals 46 for the number of chromosomes that are in human somatic cells. However, when we're looking at human gamete cells, the haploid number is 23, n equals 23 for the number of gametes, the number of chromosomes seen in gametes. The cell cycle is the process in which cells divide. The cell cycle is an ordered sequence of events in the life of a cell from its origin in division from a parent cell to its own division into two cells. In eukaryotes, the cell cycle consists of two main phases, mitosis, which is the division of the genetic material, and cytokinesis, which is the division of the cytoplasm. The first stage of the cell cycle is interphase. It takes up about 90% of the cell cycle, making it the longest phase. During interphase, the cell grows and the genetic material is copied. Interphase is divided into three subphases, G1, S, and G2. The G1 phase is the first gap phase, and this contains a lot of growth of the cell. The S phase is the synthesis phase, and this is where DNA is copied. G2 is the second gap, where again, more growth of the cell is required. So what goes on during these gap phases? If we look at G1, there's a lot of things that are occurring in order for the cell to determine whether or not division is the appropriate. During this first gap phase, or G1, in interphase, two things happen. There is a lot of growth. The cell is producing proteins and cytoplasmic organelles such as the mitochondria and the ER. The cell is also surveying the surrounding environment to look if signals are present, such as growth factors, to commit to cell division. If the conditions are not favorable for division, the cell enters a G0 phase. This entire process of G1 and the surveying and the growth takes about five to six hours to complete. In the S phase of interphase, DNA is replicated. This takes about 10 to 12 hours to complete. And finally, there's a second G phase, the G2 phase of interphase. And this is where the cell continues to go and generate all the components that are necessary for cell division. This takes about four to six hours to complete and contains some checkpoints that we will discuss in a further lecture. Now that we understand interphase, let's look at mitosis and look at each of the features that make up each of the phases of mitosis. If we look at the diagram on the screen, the M stands for mitosis, the mitotic phase of the cell cycle. This is the process where the genetic material is divided. This division takes place in five phases, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. The end goal of mitosis is to produce two genetically identical daughter cells. An important thing to notice is that the chromosomes have not yet condensed. So when we look at G2 of interphase, we see the centrosomes are present with the centriole pairs and that the chromosomes are duplicated, but at this point they are not yet condensed. The nucleus and the nuclear envelope are still present. Next, as we move into prophase, you can see that the chromosomes have condensed, forming two sister chromatids connected by a centromere. The centromeres are starting to move towards the opposite pole of the cell, forming the mitotic spindle. 
During pro-metaphase, the nuclear envelope breaks down. This allows the microtubules of the mitotic spindle to attach to the kinetic core of the centromere. The microtubule is connected to the centrosome and therefore connected to the chromosome. During metaphase, the centrosome are now on opposite poles. This causes the chromosomes to line up at the equator of the cell. This area, the equator, is known as the metaphase plate. During anaphase, each of the sister chromatids get pulled towards opposite poles of the cell. The final stage of mitosis is telophase and cytokinesis. During telophase, the nuclear membrane reforms around the chromosome. You will notice the indentation known as the cleavage furrow. In animal cells, the cleavage furrow functions to split cytoplasm from the two newly formed daughter cells. This process is known as cytokinesis, and it happens simultaneously with telophase. Now let's review this process, not only with the drawings that we just walked through, but with some of the micrographic images. We're going to focus on the chromosomes because this is an easy way to identify which stage of mitosis that you're in. In each of the images, the chromosomes are shown in blue, the microtubules are shown in green, and the intermediate filaments are shown in red. Starting on the far left, we're looking at G2 of interphase, you can see the chromosomes within the cell, but you cannot identify any specific strands because at this point the chromosomes are not yet condensed. You can also see the mitotic spindle, however it's only on one side of the cell. In the middle set of images, as we're looking at prophase, you can start making out some of the chromosomes. Again, the chromosomes are seen in blue. This is because by this phase, by prophase, the chromosomes have started to condense. The mitotic spindle, which is seen in the microtubules in green, is still only seen on one side of the cell. And looking at the images on the far right, in prometaphase, the chromosomes are condensed and organizing on the mitotic spindle. The spindle is now on opposite poles of the cell. As we move from prometaphase to metaphase, which is shown on the left in these set of images, you can see that the chromosomes, which are in blue, are lined in the middle of the cell. In anaphase, in the center set of images, the chromosomes are being pulled to the opposite poles by the mitotic spindle. And in the images on the far right, in telophase and cytokinesis, which occur at the same time, you can see that the chromosomes are being pulled into the two new daughter cells and the cleavage furrow is beginning to form. Remember that the mitotic spindle is made of microtubules and associated proteins as well, and it controls chromosome movement during mitosis. The assembly of the spindle microtubules begins at the centrosome. So as we look at the spindle, let's look at centrosomes, the spindle microtubules, and the asters. The centrosome replicates during interphase, forming two centrosomes that migrate to opposite ends of the cell during prophase and prometaphase. An aster is a radial array of short microtubules that extend from each centrosome. Spindle microtubules attach to the kinetic cores of the chromosomes and begin to move the chromosomes during various phases of mitosis. Now let's look at overall what goes on during each stage of mitosis and the cell cycle by way of review. An adult human contains an estimated 100 trillion cells, and yet we start life as a single cell. To grow, develop, and repair tissue damage, we rely on cell division. In eukaryotic cells, this process is accomplished by a series of well-orchestrated steps called mitosis. Every day our bodies must produce millions of skin cells to replace those lost through normal activity. Each of these cells must have a complete complement of the genetic material. Prior to cell division, where the cell divides into two identical cells, the DNA needs to be replicated so that each daughter cell receives an exact copy. 
Following DNA replication, the chromosomes condense in the nucleus of the cell. DNA condenses by wrapping around cores of histone proteins forming nucleosomes. This beads on a string structure is called chromatin. As a cell prepares to divide, chromatin coils up further, shortening and condensing the chromosome. The replicated chromosomes are called sister chromatids. The replication of DNA and the formation of sister chromatids is one part of the entire cell cycle. To prepare for cell division, the cell goes through interphase, which can be divided into three distinct phases. During G1, or GAP1 phase, all the organelles and cytoplasmic components, including the centrioles in animal cells, replicate. Then during S, or synthesis phase, the DNA replicates. Finally, during G2, or GAP2 phase, all the enzymes needed to aid in the process of cell division are produced. Most eukaryotic cells spend a great deal of time in interphase, and a very short period of time actually dividing, a process called mitosis. The cell is now ready to go through mitosis, which consists of prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. During prophase, the chromosomes condense and become visible, appearing as two sister chromatids held together at the centromere. The cytoskeleton disassembles as the spindle begins to form. In animal cells, centrioles play an important role in the distribution of the chromosomes in the dividing cell. The centrioles migrate to opposite poles, establishing a bridge of microtubules called the spindle apparatus, and the nuclear envelope breaks down. Towards the end of prophase, chromosomes attach by proteins in their centromeres called kinetochores to microtubules from each pole moving the chromosomes toward the equator of the cell. During metaphase, all chromosomes are aligned at the equator of the cell, called the metaphase plate. Anaphase begins with the degradation of proteins that hold sister chromatids together, freeing individual chromosomes. The free chromosomes are then pulled by their kinetochores to opposite poles. At telophase, a cleavage furrow forms in the center of the cell. This indentation is made from a constricting belt of actin filaments surrounding the inside of the cell's circumference. Chromosomes cluster at opposite poles and begin decondensing as the nuclear envelope reforms around them. The spindle apparatus disassembles as the microtubules are broken down into tubulin monomers that can be used to form the cytoskeleton of the daughter cells. In animal cells, Cytokinesis completes cell division by extending the cleavage furrow to completely separate the newly formed daughter cells. Since plant cell walls cannot be constricted by actin fibers, vesicles form an expanding membrane partition called the cell plate. Like animal cells, plant cells use cytokinesis to finish the division of the contents of the cytoplasm between the two identical daughter cells. During the cell cycle, certain checkpoints are encountered to make sure the process is occurring accurately. And if it is not, the cell cycle will stop at the checkpoint and correct, or possibly inhibit that cell from dividing. The first checkpoint is the G1S checkpoint and is considered the primary point at which the cell cycle continues or stops. External signals and growth factors can influence the cell cycle and affect the progress at or before this critical checkpoint. The G2M checkpoint allows cells that have successfully completed all three phases of interphase to begin mitosis. The last checkpoint is the spindle checkpoint, ensuring that all chromosomes have attached to the spindle in preparation for anaphase. Growth factors, the size of the cell and the nutritional state of the cell are all contributing factors in cell cycle regulation, ensuring that only certain cells divide at appropriate times. Once all the checkpoints in interphase are cleared, mitosis can occur. From interphase to cytokinesis, the entire process of cell division can take on average 10 to 20 hours in a typical plant or animal cell. Depending on the nature and use of the cell, 
The process can happen at different frequencies as well. In humans, our skin cells have a high turnover rate due to wear and tear and go through mitosis very frequently, whereas other cells, such as adult neurons and muscle cells, rarely divide. The accuracy of mitosis, as well as the consistency of the checkpoints during interphase, ensure that most cells in a eukaryotic organism can produce identical copies of themselves. This process allows for growth and repair to prolong overall physiology as well as life itself. So as we've looked through the cell cycle, we've looked at the four main stages, G1, S, G2, and mitosis. And we've also considered the five steps of mitosis and looked at the mitotic spindle. By way of reminder, the main result of mitosis is two identical daughter cells that have the same DNA content. If you have any questions about this lecture or the reading material that was assigned to accompany this lecture, please feel free to email your professor to bring your questions to office hours or to class. Additionally, you can reach out to the learning assistant assigned for this lecture. Use the assisted reading questions, the questions at the end of the chapter, and the questions at the end of each chapter section as a way to prepare yourself for the quiz and the test on this material.